Hello, everybody, and welcome back to On the Roof. Today, we have a wonderful guest, Selena Smith. Welcome, Selena. Thanks. I'm so happy to be here with you today. The pleasure certainly mine. Uh, Selena is a subconscious mind and body guide. Can you tell us what that entails? Yeah, absolutely. I work with people to essentially what are to understand what are their self-limiting subconscious patterns that they hold in place for themselves. Um, and essentially what the subconscious is, is it's a kind of a collection. It's a storehouse of all of our memories, all of these imprints of everything that's happened to us over the course of our life. Um, even, um, you know, generational, um, ancestral type, type of aspects and even societal type, um, imprints that we have that essentially form the way that we see the world. And so, um, what, what ends up happening is that it gives us, it provides the lens through which ev we see everything, everything about our experience. And what I found in myself through um, doing this kind of like practice and technique and, and healing essentially, um, is that I was having a lot of self limitations. Um, and I was seeing the world in a very, very specific way that was limiting my ability to really be present, to perform, to live in full happiness and joy and expression, and even like move forward in my own business. And so um, through like years and years of study of a variety of different things, I was able to um, uh, kind of develop this practice in working with people in a variety of different subconscious techniques. And so now I work with people to um, essentially remove um, and dissolve the blind spots that they have in place that are keeping them from um, fully experiencing life and rising up to the next level in their business. Um, so yeah, that's just like a very brief introduction. It's the perfect place for you to go because I was just gonna ask you that. When you mentioned blind spot, what is a blind spot and how is it preventing somebody from, how is it holding somebody back? That's a great question. So, um, essentially what the subconscious is doing is it's, it's always um, trying to keep us safe. Like it's not, it's not a bad thing. It's not like trying to keep, you know, hold you back from, from your, your potential. What it does is it's um, based these imprints that we have that come in throughout the course of our life. They, um, they focus on, um, you know, it might be something that was like a difficult experience that happened in your life or just, you know, something that happened in your early childhood because, when we are kids, we're actually, everything that comes into us, the part of the brain that um, has this discriminating ability to discriminate like what's real or not real, we don't have that fully formed yet. So everything that right. comes in when we're, we're a child, it just but forms. But it's coming in. It's coming it's in. It yeah. Forms, yeah, and it's like, this is the way I see the world, you know? Mm -hmm. And then if we have like a traumatic event or just like an emotional, a strong emotional event in our life of some, of some sort, that's going to provide some sort of lens. And so what ends up happening is that um, when other patterns arise in our life that feel or seem similar to this previous event, um, what happens is that we'll then like run that automatic programming and see it only through the lens of how we know. And so if we had, for example, an experience that was like, you know, um, you know, I'm a kid, I'm riding a bike. I fall over, I'm in a lot of pain, I start crying, and maybe like mom or dad is like, you know, talking to the neighbor and they don't see right away. It's not their fault, but they don't see right away and that you're like crying and then all of a sudden you can have all of these thoughts of like this really strong emotion that's tied together of like, oh my God, it's gonna feel like this forever, I'm abandoned, no one loves me, like whatever might be coming up. Yeah, wherever and you then, go, you're a kid. Exactly, and then it becomes like held and locked in your memory and also in the body as well. And so um, that's why it's so important for us to be able to process these emotions when they come up is that um, to really feel them and understand them and let them go because otherwise they store and they form these patterns. So then in the future, it might be something like completely different where it's like a situation at work that comes up and it's like, um, 
you know, maybe somebody like said something that, that kind of hurt or it dug into you a little bit, like maybe it triggered you in some way mm -hmm. and like, no, and then everybody else in the room doesn't say anything about it. And maybe that could feel again, like, oh my God, I'm being abandoned. I'm hurt. This pain is going to last forever. And even though the situation is like completely different, you're still applying the same pattern and you can only see it from that lens. When really what was happening is like, you know, maybe this coworker, they just said something that like, you know, it, it didn't have the same energetic tone to it, right? But that's the way that you perceive the world. So what I do is I help people to, um, we go in and find, you know, they basically have something that's limiting them. I, so I primarily work with entrepreneurs these days. Um, and so especially people who are trying to get to the next level in their business. So it's maybe that, you know, they're trying to implement a pivot um, in their business and try to do something different, or they are, um, you know, they're stuck at like a revenue plateau and they've been stuck at that revenue plateau forever and they can't implement it. Or sometimes it's just like a lot of times, a lot of people that come to me, it's even cycles of burnout that are um, rooted in, in old patterns of like not wanting to go to the next thing because it's this um, fear of burnout or it, you're going into the old um, uh, neurological processing, like your nervous system goes into the same like cycles of like, go, come back, go, come back or overcome them. Burnout could be related to a couple of different things. Um, and so, yeah, it's it basically going and finding these and being able to um, find them and actually even release them. So we like d can go in and dissolve them um, instantaneously by um, doing some switches with some neurological pathways in the brain using a theta brainwave state, um, which is like a relaxed meditative state, and, um, and then also doing the energetic release from the body as well. And so that then you can all, it's like all of a sudden you can see the world in a completely different way that you didn't even realize was there and available to you before. You know, I had a, a client who we were releasing some really, really old stuff that was also related to like some old ancestral things. When well, you're talking about ancestral later. things, let me interrupt you for a second. Yeah, you mean yeah, like absolutely. people who claim they have you know, previous lives? Um, so that's a little bit different. Previous lives can be a little bit different. And ancestral, do you mean, from, so grandparents, great grandparents, your like line. down your, okay, okay, I just wanted to be clear, yep, okay. throughout your genetic line. Why these things can be so strong is it's actually even held in the DNA, right? They have studies out of like, um, you know, someone who is um, a war veteran, right? And this is, they, they've shown this many times as someone who's a war veteran and the same types of tendencies of, like, can you imagine, for example, like someone who was like a World War II veteran and they were at, down in the trenches and they had, you know, all of their comrades were around them and, you know, there's, you know, um, guns going off, bullets coming in, bombs going off, whatever. Um, you know, they have uh, the people around them have, have passed away. They're there by themselves. There's like intense, intense fear intense loneliness, intense, like, am I even going to survive? Like all of these types of emotions, right? And like, can you imagine how those um, intense fears could actually be then passed down that even the child then could have, have that within them? And they actually have studies to even prove and show that this is, this happens. That's interesting. I, Cause I'm wondering right now, I, I used to have a really bad reaction as a child, every time I'd lose a game of Battleship, and I'm wondering if there's, <laughs> I gotta look back if there was anybody in the Navy in my family. Could be. I, um, growing up, I grew up in a very um, competitive environment because first I grew up with brothers. I was the only girl, but then the school that I went to was a very like, um, it's a highly, highly ranked school. So the competition was really high. Academically? Mm-hmm. And then, and, and um, um, and the types of people who went to the school, like the, the parents were very high achieving parents. Right. And so, um, just, it was kind of bred in, in our culture in our little microcosm of culture of this where, competition where did you grow that up? really got bred into me. Um, so I grew up, in this, this part of the school that I'm talking about was in Texas in a suburb of, of Texas in Dallas. Um, but everybody who was from that suburb, um, they were not from Texas. It's like they were relocated because of a parent's job or, you know, yeah, I went to yeah, school yeah. with a lot of people who like yeah. their parents were like professional sports players, things like this. Yeah. So you can imagine like that raised like competition. So it, so it could even be something like 
it doesn't have to be exactly the same scenario of like, okay, I had a war veteran and now I don't, you know. The no, no, I, I, was, so. I was just joking. Actually. It's a joke. I, it's I a joke. Making, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, my jokes be, are not that good. A variety of so many things, you know? <laughs> yeah. But you and know, so down south like, too, there's all, always that competition too, just between old money and new money. Absolutely. I mean, it's a big yeah. deal made about that. Meanwhile, if you all got money, whether it's old money or new money, the good thing is you got money, right? There's a, yeah, the other yeah, side of the yeah. tracks, nobody's having that problem. You know, it, it's interesting. Well, it's it's, almost, it's, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, I was going to say, no, I was just going to say that's really interesting to you because actually just so many of the entrepreneurs that I work with, um, they do have these money limiting beliefs, right? They do have these like limiting subconscious patterns related to what is money? How can I have money? But it can also be things like, for example, if I had a client who she grew up like very working class England, very, very blue collar. And to her, and actually this is a pattern I've seen actually in a couple of people is like, the only people that they would see when they were growing up who had money were mean or yeah. evil or yeah. like treated people badly. Mm -hmm. And so they would have, so they always like want to have money or they would want to get money. But the thing is, is that they would never actually allow themselves to have money because there is a subconscious pattern that's running. There's an association with, right. Yeah, that, that, it's, that money is going to corrupt you, that you're going to become a bad person, that it's not possible to be loving and have money at the same time to be a compassionate person it, it changes you it can it corrupts you like all sorts of varieties and for each person it's going to be a slightly different variation based off of all of the complex things that make them who they are and that's where it's like this one-on-one -on -one work is so important to do it in a one-on-one -on -one sort of format but um yeah it's like i mean i work with so many uh, people on their money beliefs i didn't come from an area where there was a lot of money my, mm -hmm. None of my friends' families were really, nobody was affluent at all. I mean, people were, I guess, well off as far as middle class, you know, but nobody wanted anything. Like, we, we, but yeah. we all grew up simply and humbly. The significance and the importance of money, the value of how to use money to make money and the, uh, the worthiness of having money, like, these things were never oh, taught. Absolutely. So, so that's one thing. If you don't learn this stuff, you're really behind the eight ball to begin with because you're going to go yeah. up in, into the workplace at some point and you're going to be against p people that understand that and they have an advantage yeah. over you. But one thing you yeah. do have when you're not aware of that is work ethic. But the clarity to be able to distinguish each thing from the others, you know, that that's an important thing that I believe what and you're saying. When, uh, he, I'm going a little all over the place here, but absolutely, what, yeah. what you were just saying was basically trauma. I mean, there's, there's trauma. I mean, and, and I've had... So many of, the, of these interviews where trauma is always the root of everything. Mm -hmm. And the only answer I've ever been able to come up with was how to heal trauma is communication. Like that, mm -hmm. like, now listen, if you, even if, even if it's really like, if you've been, you know, violated, physically violated in some way, you know, the fact that you can't tell anybody, that's a, yep. that's, that's the, that's the issue. I mean, mm -hmm. if something traumatic has already happened, it already happened, right? It, it, it's too mm -hmm. late to undo something that's been done. But the mm -hmm. fact that you can't talk about it becomes a bigger mm -hmm. problem, actually. Yeah, then, that's then what the, perpetuated. Mm -hmm. But now, so also something small, something insignificant, like a, a message getting received differently than it was intended and mm -hmm. given. So, and you're young, you're a child, you just misunderstand the intention or whatever. You cop an attitude, mm -hmm. and you're a spoiled little kid. You're gonna pout or whatever you're gonna do. That turns yeah. into something because you stuff it because you can't say, "How come you did that to me?" Because that, yeah. that's, that setting hasn't been created where that kid has that safety to say, to question it. Yep. Right? Absolutely. So, so it, doesn't it all come down to communication? That's a long question, but that's what I mean. I think so. And, and, I, would, and I would even add to that. So absolutely. Like 100% of everything that you just said, because that is how, you know, these things get stored. And that's how these patterns really become really painful. Yeah. Is, or become becomes like I said perpetuated where yeah, they just yeah. keep happening over and over is because there's a lot of shame and, and guilt that are associated with feeling a certain way or I believe I did something wrong or I am wrong um, um, that's yeah difference between the shame and the guilt but the um, it it perpetuates it the cycle continues because you're unable to release the cycle and it even starts to when you start to get into like pieces and aspects of magnetism, it actually even starts to draw similar experiences into your life because essentially the ego is trying to reconfirm itself because that's the purpose this, this, uh, um, of the ego is to 
keep your identity in place because that's what keeps you alive, right? And yeah. so it's constantly seeking scenarios and this is where you see through your own lens. It's trying, it's always seeking patterns to reaffirm I know who I am. And that's why we will stay in these cycles for so long, even though they're as so negative beautiful. as they might be, right? As negative as they might be, yeah. because they reaffirm my sense they're of familiar. self. I know yeah, who yeah, I yeah. am. I exist. I exist. It all so comes back down to that kind of. It's question. so that that concept is like not even it. It's so prevalent in so many drug addiction is like. Why do you keep going down down the road? downhill mm -hmm. when you don't have brakes and you just keep doing it. You keep getting in another car mm -hmm. that doesn't have brakes and you're going down yeah. and you just, why do you keep doing it? Yeah. Yeah. And it's, and it's the whole thing of like, there's a lot of fear of uncertainty that people have. And this is where I, the work with like, especially with the entrepreneurs that I really, really comes in of moving up to that next level because it's more scary to go into yep. the realm of uncertainty than to keep doing what you've always been doing. Because right. what you've always been doing, it may, as painful or as challenging or as difficult as it may be, as much as on a conscious level, you're like, I want to get out of this. I'm so done with this. I don't want to do this anymore. It is subconsciously scary to move into a realm of uncertainty um, because, it's, because at, least, at least in your patterns, you're like, I know how to do this. I've survived it. I know how yeah. to do it. Yeah, but that and subconscious so is also very cunning too, isn't it? Because <laughs> if I'm that entrepreneur you're talking about, right? I can yeah. be so, like, gullible to my own bullshit that mm -hmm. I'm going to find people... All of us. Yeah. Right, but, well, uh, hopefully eventually, you yeah. you know, you, you get strong enough to make a move, but I, would, I, could, I could attract people and find people that are going to co-sign my misery so that now I'm comfortable complaining and moaning about this shit job I got and this and that. And then, but that I know, and I know I got this support from these other people, that, you know, and that's comfortable. Like you said, it's familiar. Yeah, it's great. Exactly. But they eventually got to get to that point where they're going, listen, and usually that's like hitting some kind of rock bottom, you know, just say, I, I can't take this anymore. This is like, I got, and then they find somebody like you and then you'll be able to show them how this is like kind of a simple move. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's a yeah. it's a big step, but it's not that difficult. The thing is to take exactly. the step. That's mm -hmm. difficult to Absolutely. actually take it. Taking it isn't. Absolutely. Getting and to the point of taking so, it. And it's so interesting because um, so often the people that I work with, um, you know, they'll they'll reach out. They'll have some sort of initial like, yeah, I think I need this. Um, it's not happening so much now, just because of the the types of people that I'm working with now, or, and I can talk about that in a moment. Um, but so often the people that are coming to me and they're like, okay, we'll have a conversation. We'll talk about it. They're like, I need this. I need this. I need this. And then at the end they'll be like, yeah, but I can't because of this. And yeah. almost a hundred percent of the time where they say, I can't because of this, whether it's money, time, I don't have the commitment level right now, whatever it is, that is the exact reason why they need it like uh, almost 100% of the time. <laughs> and it's just literally perpetuating their self-limiting patterns, right? And because they're just seeking that, like you said, they're seeking like the scenario, okay, I'm going to reaffirm that. I'm going to see this through my lens. I'm going to see it over and over and over again. Okay, so let me um, give you a hypothetical. I, I yeah, really want to, I want to take this course to get, yeah. get to get to a higher level on my job. Yeah. Uh, this, this course I have to take costs $2,000. Mm -hmm. I don't have the two thousand dollars. It's not. I I can't find the means to get the two thousand yeah. dollars. So, that's my built-in excuse. It's perfect because there's. You know, I I've actually really tried to put it together and it hasn't worked. So now I have, you know, yeah. I have the, the the ability to rationalize why I'm not there. Right. 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 But I come to yep. you and you're gonna and I'm gonna tell you that I'm gonna say yeah. I mean I should take the. What I really need to do is just take this course in advance. And you're yeah. going, well, then why don't you do it? And I'm going to say, because I don't have the money. You're going, you can find the money. And I'm going, I, I'm just playing devil's advocate here, right? Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I can't. I mean, I have, I have a, uh, a situation at home. I can't take the money from it. There's not enough money to begin with. Right. You know, right. so I'm, you, you can, you know, now, the, the fine line for me, because I've been in this type of situation, not necessarily over money, but it doesn't matter what the, th what the issue is. But I, find, I have to find out whether I'm bullshitting myself or maybe I'm really not ready to take that step. And that's, yeah. you know, that, it, that could be the case. You, you don't know. But if I'm bullshitting myself, I usually know it. 
you know, that can be tricky too because you can really and be that's where you lying to, to yourself. Yeah, but. really. Yeah, you have to really, really listen to yourself, and that's the thing is, and that's actually even part of one of the things that I teach people when we're working together. So we do these dissolving of the subconscious beliefs where they work with me and we get it and we like, we'll clear out like decades in like a single session. And also I teach them how to listen to themselves better so that they can understand. And so they're supported after the fact of, um, that, that like you exactly like you're saying, exactly like you're saying of like knowing when I'm bullshitting myself because it happens to people all the time. It even happens to me still. I'm so much better about being able to identify yeah. these patterns within myself. Um, you know, I work on myself all the time. And still, even I, like, will be like, I'm seeing it in this particular way. And then eventually it's like, no. And so there are times where when I even find myself getting in a cycle where I need some external help as well to really be able to see clearly. Um, and that, so it actually kind of comes back to your point about the communication as well. And being able to have really uh, open, within yourself. open and honest, yes open and honest communication with yourself about what is actually going on from an objective point of view. Is this really true? Do I have to believe this? Is this the actual reality? And How about really, this? Like, get super or is this real all I'm going about. to accept from myself? Ooh, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. Like, you yeah. know, when you're told that you can do certain things and maybe you just don't believe in yourself and then somebody says you can do this you can do this and then you go and you do it you start to get that belief in yourself so you know you can accomplish things and when you yeah. start to challenge yourself and get there and then mm -hmm. later on in life you 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 know when you're copping out you know when yeah. you're not standing up i did yeah. i i can tell you this is how i understood addiction mm. right because i knew when i was doing the wrong thing mm. i knew when mm -hmm. i was lying every single time i knew when i was yeah. stealing every single every single time i know this is not right but like mm -hmm. I was compelled and I'm not, I'm not excusing any of it, believe, but under yeah. any way, shape or form, I'm not. But yeah. What I am saying is when I'm not getting high with time mm -hmm. and clarity and distance between that time mm -hmm. and now, like I don't consider, you know, conducting my life that way. Mm -hmm. But in yeah. the, it, so I can, under, so now I can kind of understand what addiction is. And when you're, you know, when you're mm -hmm. so drawn to do what you know is fucking wrong. Mm -hmm. you know, so in mm -hmm. a sense it's forgiving in a way that's why I'm saying it because that's yeah. the point that's the whole point of communication right mm -hmm. so if you learn how to understand yourself better right you can kind of call yourself on it without beating yourself up like am I capable of more is kind of a way of beating myself up if I'm going to stay there like if I'm going to mm -hmm. step it up then yeah then, then that's motivation but the point yes. is whatever the thought is to be followed so where do you come in how do you know when you have somebody that starts with the excuses and because some people are so good. I mean, their game is good, you know, mm -hmm. like yep. you wonder why they even showed up in the first place. Cause the challenge is just to see if they can fool you almost, you know, because yeah, the, at they the end of the time you spent so much time with this person, yeah. they didn't grow. But yeah. how do you know, like you have to go case by case. Is it just that simple? Yeah. There's, there's a level of trust that, um, really, um, it, it comes in place to be able to do the really, really deep work. And also I am um, just, I, I'm a, I've been doing this for so long. I'm, I'm, you know, it's, it's, I can just pick up on things. So like, honestly, within, within two, three minutes of talking to someone, when they get on a call with me, I can just pick up and I'm like, yep, I see what this is. This is what's going on. Yep. 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 It, what it uh, requires from them is a level of trust of saying like, uh, okay, yeah, I can start to see some of that in within myself. So that takes some self-trust that mm -hmm. they can be like, oh, yeah, okay, I can see that about myself. And then it also takes some self-trust and trust in me to be able to be like, right. okay, I'm ready to enter into this space with you, and, we can, and, I'm, and I'm ready and willing and open to work together. Um, and because it is, it's, it's, again, it's like that communication of being able to really go deep because we're only going to be able to go as deep as the person is willing to reveal and say these yeah. things about themselves that, um, and show these things about themselves and reveal these things so that we can really just like take the time and then dissolve it. And the thing that's so beautiful about it is that you don't, okay. So it's like you, you, you go there, but then you only have to go there for just a second. And then when we go there for just a second, all of a sudden we can open it up and then I can pull off all of the pieces, all of the heavy emotions that are stored um, it is truly like an energetic the release that happens that it is like 
okay, we can, we can switch, we can switch the understanding, we can switch the pattern of what has been keeping you in place, whatever it is, whether it's, you know, money makes people evil, like just the example that we used from before. Also so replace that concept with a more positive concept? And releasing the things that need to be released in addition to it. So like if there's also perhaps like guilt that was stored together with this, right? Of all of the years, of all of the times that you felt guilty about holding on to money or something like this. or And, and so it's just getting to that place. And then there's all of these other associated things that are pulled out as well. Um, and then when we clear all of it out, it's literally like we will clear like decades worth of your life out in like a single session. And so I even had a, a client um, who's come on in uh, maybe about a month into the program. And after the first session, he was like, this, Lena, like we did more there than in, in the last five years of therapy. Like, <laughs> um, I mean, it took him... A mm -hmm. bit of therapy to get to the level of self-awareness. So the person who is ready for this work, they do have to have some self-awareness where they are ready and willing to face themselves, where they can take responsibility for themselves, right? They're in, they can't be in like victim mode of it. Like, oh, everything is, the entire world is out to get me. Like, that's not the kind of person who's going to be good to do this work. Not for you, because you, you appear to me, like, just based on this conversation alone, mm. there's a comfortability. And the word that you used just a moment ago was trust. And somebody, yeah. can, right, you have smarts of the of the the technical stuff that you have to know and pick up on when somebody talks to you, right? But mm -hmm. none of that even matters. It matters mm -hmm. to you because you need that in order to take the next step. But the next step is yep. that I, if I'm your, your client, I have to put my trust in you. And you make that easy. You just have a, you have mm -hmm. an easy delivery. You, there's a warmth. It's, there's a sharpness. Like you're, you're accurate. You're on point. You know, you, you're talking directly. You're not a lollygagging around. You're just really, you're, you're on point, you know? So that, that holds me yeah. accountable in a sense, right? But mm. there's, a, it's, there's an ease that has to come with that. People that don't trust, don't trust. And it's not even, they don't even realize that they're sizing you up that way. And they're just mm -hmm. looking for that one reason to not trust you and stay yeah. in this. Because as much as we want help, it's that fucking scary that we yeah, really, absolutely. we want to avoid it just as much as we want it. And that's, I think yeah. that's where it comes through. You're either going to take the plunge or you're not. Yeah. And, and there were certain situations and scenarios that came up that arose in their life that that lack of trust came in for some reason, you know? And yeah, so yeah, yeah. like, it's important, it's important to be able to hold that and recognize that and like not beat yourself up and hold somebody in that space to be like, it's okay. Like it is okay. This thing happened. And we're gonna take care of it, you know. Like, you are loved, you are held, and and it has to be in that place. And so it, it is true. I, I really appreciate you saying that because it is this balance of like the the holding and the safety and the trust that is required to like form the basis of of working with somebody and and making sure that they can feel safe to go to these places, and then being able to have the the directness to actually be yeah. to go in and get it yep. and, and and to get it. Super and all the know-how to be able to decipher the facts yeah. and the details of, but yeah. none of that means anything w without yeah. that ability to gain my Bed. trust. Yeah. I have to feel I'm safe, you know, yeah. like I'm not judged, whatever, all you know, whatever it is. I realized some too, you said, you mentioned something about patterns and this, I'm 60 years old, man. I just yeah. noticed this recently, the last few months mm -hmm. in a conversation mm -hmm. similar to this. My dad was a, a basketball coach in high school, you know? So my, I was growing up, that's all I wanted to do. That was my approval thing with him and, you know. And I got thrown off every single team I played on. Every single team I was thrown off the team. Wow. And it was okay. always c confronting the coach or just like, you know, calling mm. him out. Like, you know, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. like in fifth grade and I'm calling out this mm -hmm. coach, you know, who's, who's basically <laughs> giving his Saturday afternoon to work with mm -hmm. a bunch of knuckleheads like us, you know what I mean? But I, my whole thing was, I, you know, you, you're not as good as my own father. So, mm -hmm. you know, like you need to give me more room to do my thing. Like this was, mm. I don't realize it like this. I can't see it like that. And me and my yeah. dad were not able to sit down and kind of iron this thing out. So it went on again <laughs> in sixth grade and it said all the way up into high school. And then, you know, yeah. eventually. Yeah. And then finally when my drug situation, when I quit that all together, started getting yeah. high and partying and I couldn't get straight. I wind yeah. up going into this one rehab. The issue that I was confronted with all the time was being homophobic. So they, mm -hmm. they gave me a group, they put me in a group 
with a, a gay counselor. They're trying not, to trigger you. Trying yeah. To oh, that's, you. it's behavioral modification. Yeah. That, that was a treatment yeah. center. I was in one of them, you know? So mm -hmm. yes, exactly what you don't want. They're going to give you too much of it. And what you, what mm -hmm. you're good at, you ain't going to see it. It was that simple. Mm. I realize what's going on. I figure that's what they're doing. Right. So, okay. So that whole day when I have to meet with him that night before our first group, yeah. um, I got to make this like presentation to him and just say, listen, man, I know this is, you know why I'm here. I know why I'm here in your group. Right. So uh, yeah. I'll give you my word that I won't cross those lines or disrespect you as long as you do the same. I go on with this. It's a whole big spiel. It's a, you know, I've been working on this, like, you know, cause I, cause I don't want them. I don't want to fall for this trick. I, I need yeah. to show them that I'm stronger than this. Right. So, mm -hmm. so I, I, after I go through with this whole spiel, he just kind of, um, uh, went along with it for a while. Then when I'm done, he goes, so that's why you think they put you in my group. Let me tell you why they actually put you in my group. Because when we had our staff meeting on you, not one person on the staff believes that you're going to stay clean for even a week. Mm -hmm. Everything changed in me. I'm like livid now. Now I'm, I completely did like a Tasmanian devil deal, you know? I'm yeah, like, yeah. what? Who? What? Everybody, dude. And you, the reason they put you in my group is I'm the one they don't like. So when you go out and get high, you're on my caseload. Mm. And I'm like, I can't. This is so offensive, man. I, I'm just, mm -hmm. I've never worked so hard for anything in my life. and get so insulted for whatever I did. Mm -hmm. I was just like, I took it real personal. And he goes, yeah. well, what we could do is we could work together here and prove them wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you want to know something, Selena? That was the coach I was always wanting. That was the coach you were always wanting. That was the coach I was always And this came to me in every way that I wouldn't have drawn it up. That's why I bring up the fact that he was gay or whatever. Because to this day, yeah. he's one of my dearest, closest friends. Because he took an interest in me getting sober. That's what it was yeah. about. It wasn't about any of this stuff. You know, he's, he was a solid human being. You know, yeah. he's what I needed when I needed it more than I needed anything else at any other time, actually. What you would know? you say is the thing that you needed the most about what he said to you? What was it that he gave to you? What I wanted for my father. Which is? We got this. 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 Mm -hmm. You ready to go to work? Mm -hmm. We got this. Mm -hmm. Let's go to work. Mm -hmm. You know, let's, let's do what we need to do here. And let's, you know, so that that's... You know, that's what I wanted. I didn't know how to say it that way. He didn't uh, know how. And it was just that. But but that well, inability yeah. to communicate like that, it snowballed uh, into shit that I don't even want to. It's too yeah, much to get into. All kinds into. of, stuff. Yeah, kinds of yeah. stuff. And But it's that simple. And somebody yeah. as insightful as you, you can cut to the chase. The, the, the story doesn't have to be three volumes long. Yeah. It's like, dude, you know what? We get lost in our story. We get so lost. That's one of the things that I say at the very beginning when working with people. Is I always Especially if you're Irish. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, can I, do I have your permission to pause you if we get too yeah. much into the story and bring you back? <laughs> you do have, so, you did bring your off button, right? <laughs> <laughs> so it's interesting. It, it makes me think, so I'm just kind of thinking, I'm reflecting back to what you were saying about the coaches. So what do you think where you were doing in the coaches of that you were, la that it was kind of having you act out or what were you, what were you projecting on them of them not we, giving we, you? We were the, a bunch of knuckleheads. We were losing. Like I'm watching my dad win at, at a much higher level with like yeah. local kids and they were beating kids that were like all picked, chosen, handpicked. Like yeah. high school sports wasn't like this in the late sixties, you know, it just wasn't yeah, what it is yeah. now, you know? So, yeah. so it was really, you took pride in, in being the kids from your area that, yeah. you know, we're going to play whoever you had to play, right? So, yeah. and here we were from our area. That was great, but like, but, but like, let's fucking let's have like, let's practice, let's work, let's do things, let's come on. We don't have to be, you know, t yeah, we're eleven years old, but we don't have to c keep acting like we're eleven. Let's act like we're like twelve, thirteen. Let's put yeah. a little something. And, and you know what? I was just frustrated. My father was really. Mm -hmm. uh, high energy back then, you know, much more so yeah. competitive, like, you know, and I was, um, I guess you realize that more than you even realize that you realize it, you know, I would actually little belittle a coach and, mm -hmm. to the point where like I was, and I believe me when I say this, I was so wrong and out of line. Yeah. Did your dad belittle to you? Um, did, did you feel that way sometimes? My father was strict, you know, yeah. he was strict and, you know, and, um, and so this is, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. So I, I don't know about belittle, you know, so much. Mm. Um, 
but I, I had five sisters too. So if there was any discrepancy, you had to like, you could get in trouble for calling her a name, but you can't get in trouble for raising your hand to her. <laughs> but that would be beating. Mm-hmm. That would be beating time. Ah, so you never, you okay. know. So okay. you become so it's, sharp it's okay. tongue. Is like my words, point. it's okay to have a sharp tongue, but it's not okay to do it's, like any sort it, of. Yeah. The, the, and so that's what you were taught. Yeah. And the ramifications would be less. Let's put it that way, right? Yeah, it's, it's not yeah. okay to say whatever you want, but you, yeah. it's not like so you raise your thing, hands to them. So this is the thing that's really it's a cool kind of example to use. So like this is really an interesting thing about the difference between the conscious mind and the subconscious, right? So the conscious mind is like we that this develops later in life. So our brain, it's it's starting to come in about like six, seven, eight years old where we start to develop this capacity. And that's why that early childhood is like so important, like as far as the things that come into us as forming our reality. And it actually it starts forming about like seven, eight years old, but it actually doesn't even fully form. Your brain doesn't even fully form until you're 25, where that conscious like thinking discriminating ability comes in slowly. So even in the teenage years when your emotions are crazy and the hormones are crazy and all that stuff. So Anyway, what our conscious mind does is it tries to rationalize and make okay and explain and understand our scenario. And so this is why like humans were so good and we love to categorize things. Like we put things in boxes to make ourselves feel okay. We feel like we're in control. We feel like we are safe. It's that whole thing of like not wanting to go into that realm of uncertainty because it feels unsafe, right? When we can categorize things and when when we can understand them, it helps us to feel more safe. And so this is even the thing of like where I asked, you know, did your dad belittle you in some way where you were like, well, he was strict. That is the conscious mind trying to make it okay, right? And we can understand like when we are working with people, um, we can, it's good. It's a good thing to be able to understand what's going on in the world around us. It allows us to be able to like, okay, when this person, when you're having that open communication to be like, oh, so even though I see it from this perspective, I can now hear this person, I can start to see their perspective, and I can start to be able to understand that. So it is important to have this rational thinking ability. But this is where that the internal self-listening it yeah. becomes challenging of what you were saying before of like, yeah, I know I can call myself out on my own bullshit. Like, this is where we have some difficulty sometimes, and this is where the blind spot is, is like, we can't fully call ourselves on our bullshit all the time, where you're like, well, he... Um, he was, he was strict, right? He was, he was, he was strict with us. Where um, the actual emotion that you may have felt, that you may have received, or not the emotion, but the, the feeling that you would have had may have been feeling as though you were being belittled. I don't know so much about belittled, but definitely stifled. Yeah. That was a frustrating yeah. place to be for me, you know, because yeah. I was yeah. a high energy kid, man. I was like ADHD yeah. before we yeah. knew what it was, man, you know, and it was... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Can you just yeah. shut up? I'm like, yeah. no, no, I can't. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't. And, that, and that's the whole thing. And that's the difference between the, the conscious and the subconscious is that you can rationalize it and you can start to see it from his perspective. Like I've done a lot of healing with my own yeah, parents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where we've had the conversation afterwards and they were like, oh, actually, this is what was going on for me at this time. Yeah. And you can understand it. But it doesn't release the pattern that, that you have that's going that's, on under that's, the surface. That's, that's, Brilliant. And it doesn't yes. release the emotional store of what is held in your body. So you just did it. You just did it. You called me it. out on that. That's that's good. Yeah. And so so we can rationalize. I mean, I did it all the time where I literally would not speak up against my parents because I was taught that. I was taught that good girls don't speak up. We actually, there was a phrase that we would always say when I was a kid that I would hear that actually was passed down through, through my parents, like through, from my grandparents and probably before that, that was like the way to be the way to be seen, wait, the way to be seen is to stand up, the way to be heard is to speak up, and the way to be appreciated is to shut up. And so wow. in my, wow. in my, wow. in my mind, <laughs> that I literally, it kept me where I was, I wouldn't speak up anytime because I was that, to be Was that deep south or what? what, what? That... Oh, no, my parents are from Connecticut, actually, so. Okay, but that, okay, but you know what, right, and that's, <laughs> geographically, yeah, but... no, but. That old but, money type of philosophy, yeah. right? Yeah, and it's funny because, like, my parents, my dad, he would like say it jokingly, and he wouldn't do it like in a way to be mean. But it was just, it was so. But you, you were hearing sense. that, and I was hearing that, and yeah. that became my reality. And the the thing that happens is like he didn't even realize he's doing it. So on a conscious level, I understand he didn't have any malintent. He loves me. Yeah, right. He wants to take care of me. He, you know, I understand that on a conscious level. 
but that was subconsciously keeping me from being visible. Right. Right. I yeah. did, I would I would literally I like shut up. Yep. Yeah, I mean that that's and, horrible. And, and especially yeah. like look at you like, like what you've got to, to offer people. You should not yeah. be one to be stifled. You know what right. I mean? Like and, but yeah. And so and then it's interesting cuz then we start to act these patterns out in our own lives. So like similarly to how you felt stifled when really all you wanted was to just have this feeling of like a mutuality of a, an understanding of a being heard uh, of an a, appreciation you know, like we're, that, that we're went, in this yeah. together yeah kind of thing um and you were not feeling that so then you were then even projecting that out on your own coaches Listen, of, like, I, I projected it on thing. anybody in my way like yeah. i was ru i was yeah. rude i mean i was so out of line because i was so yeah. fed up and frustrated and, and like i acted i my life is a series of, of little shit like this. But yeah. the, the most important thing you just said is, like, I could tell myself, you know, the important thing is to forgive. That's where the real growth is forgiving mm -hmm. whoever it is for whatever it is, right? Uh, but yeah. guess what? That's not the whole freaking deal. Because you have yeah. to deal with the issue at hand. You can forgive the the person, whoever it is you're blaming, but if you haven't done your work, you just, exactly. all you're doing is giving somebody a pass. You're still in that same spot. Mm -hmm. Like you haven't exactly. healed at all. You haven't, exactly. right. So the work And it's has like to putting be done. other people's stuff over yourself. And that's, it, it, it's this balance. You need both. We need, it's like right. one is good and one is bad. The subconscious is good. The conscious is bad. The conscious is good. Subconscious. It's, it's, we, it's the balance of understanding all of it. Also too, like, like to when you're stuffing that down, that's the problem. Cause we put so much pressure on keeping that down uh, that that's how much work it's going to take to pull that out. And in my case, it took decades to even yeah. get to a certain point to be available for that part yes. of a process to even happen. Yes. So yeah. it, it's and heavy. It, and, it, and it's a thing that is, is even particularly insidious in the West. I have a lot of clients um, in Europe as well, um, or just a lot, work with a lot of Americans and Europeans here in Bali yeah. as well. And um, it's this whole like work ethic drive strive thing that it's like, this we have to go about money in a certain way we have to achieve i have to be <clears throat> successful to have some sort of worth and self-value where um where you get the real value is actually being able to be present with yourself and being able to see yourself and being able to see your emotions so we're always in this like constant striving driving driving and that's where a lot of like the people that i work with go into burnout Celebration of success in the West is like very, very much, it's changing, but it's very much driven around this, like, you know, how much money did you make? How much did you work? How, like, you know, show how much of a hard yep. worker you are. And that's where you get your value from. And what that then drives throughout our education system, it drives throughout, you know, our home life, throughout our social life is like this inability to be open, to have a conversation, to be present, to be present with yourself, to feel your emotions, to express your emotions. How, we don't even about, teach in our schools, like, what are your emotions? Why do you have such them? a great where point, did, Selena. It's such like, a great where point. Do they, yeah, like, why do they yep. have, and even like the so-called quote, like negative emotions, which they're not at all, they're, they're all teaching us stuff. Like when you have anger that arises up, when you have sadness that arises up, it is coming up for a reason. Right. It is Where asking is it you from? to pay attention to something. And so it's not stuffing it down. But How about somebody that's reached some kind of status, their ability to have a conversation with somebody who hasn't reached that same level mm -hmm. of success. There's, there's already like a built in like, um, condescendence that's mm -hmm. acceptable on in, in their mindset. Like there's that, mm. there's a whole, it, it's, it, and I think it's, it's so disturbing, right? I remember working in LA and LA, I mean, we might be a shallow country, but if mm -hmm. there's a hall of fame of shallow for the United States, yeah. it's called Los Angeles. <laughs> when you ever saw somebody that kind of carried themselves with any degree of success that was yeah. unaffected, that mm. was like the highest compliment I could give somebody. They just seemed mm. like still a little down to earth. If somebody could, mm. could treat the bus boy as much as like, you know, the big guest in the room, you know, or mm -hmm. the lead performer, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Just somebody that was just able to just, because you got a heart, yeah. because you have a yeah. pulse. <laughs> yeah. You, uh, that's it's very, lost. It's, it's very um, reflective of a person's level of their own self-development and understanding to kind of just see how they are treating all of the people around them. Because it is true 
that this can become where, you know, a person can start to, I can't remember the, the exact word that you use, but like become conceited. Like that's absolutely true. And also yeah, that yeah. may, condescending, condescending. But that also can be actually just be, again, like a reconfirmation of your own reality, of your own pattern of something that had, yes, had existed. But it's a subconscious because, thing. Because, that, it's not a deliberate exactly. thing. Exactly. But it, yep. I, look, I, how long have you been over there in, in Bali? About almost two years now. Yeah. Don't you feel like so much less pressure than being here? I mean, it's just right now, it's just so much. <laughs> It's, There's it's a lot of tension. Pressure. It's tension and it's from like. It's to take a look at things. Like it's it's boiled to a level, and it's like okay, it's time to really start looking at all of these cracks and fissures that are underneath. But you know what, Selena? I have a lot of people like in your world that their whole purpose is to help people, like just bring them back, and kind of right size them a little bit. But my my deal is, you better pay attention. I mean, this world isn't like you know butterflies and moonbeams. You know what I mean? Like, there's real shit going on out there. And it's exhausting, and I, and I get all of that. But as soon as you just kind of, like, don't pay attention to it... Yeah. I mean, you get swallowed up, man, because this thing is... It, it, it's it's morphed into this in, in this many years. It's morphed... Yeah. This didn't start out, like, you know, three years ago. This was yeah. a progression that's been going on. And, and you have to be aware. And I, and I think sometimes... You do need people out there that are that are willing to like kind of fight, and fight means you're going to be disturbed a lot. You're going to be full of angst when you you know you would prefer to just kind of be chilling. Sometimes you got to get out there and, and stop this nonsense. Like this is not yeah. cool. You can't keep can't keep stepping on us and spitting on us. I mean, it's just not yep. cool. And that's and that's why there's um, there's just there's so many different voices that are needed, right? So like the type of the thing, you know, I think that what both you and I do um, is it's, it's just this bringing of awareness, right? That this, there, is, yeah. there, there is there is a there is a more joyful way. There is a easier way. There is a more comfortable way to, that you can live your life. Right. And and you and I have gone about it in different ways in our lives, just as everyone has. Right. And and because of your collective experience you're going to be able to speak to someone who is so unique and beautiful. And because of my collective experience, I'm going to be able to speak to someone so unique and beautiful. And we need yeah. all of the voices because right. the person that you're going to reach and it's really going to like hit them and hit home and like, oh my God, and like have this like, oh, I can do things differently. And you're going to be able to like really hit somebody who's going to be slightly different than the person who I'm going to be able to really hit. And that's why we need this collective of voices. And again, it comes back to this beautiful thing that you said at the beginning about the communication of just having this openness of being able to share with people of being able to welcome people into your life and to be able to hold space for them um, in their own process. And this is something that is a little bit insidious in, in the healing community and mine is like us also, you also, all of us being able to also hold our own self-love and making sure that we have enough um, space to take care of ourselves as well. So the whole thing yeah. is like you have to take care of yourself before you can take care of others. Yeah, we lose right? sight so of that easy then, too, right? Yeah, so then we're in then a place where then we can truly support others as well. And so giving us, like, so that we're not always giving, 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 but giving to ourselves first. And then you're so fully resourced that you're like, oh my God, I have so much to give to everyone else. And that's well, kind and of that. That's one of the cunning together. ways where it gets in there and you can rationalize like, I'm, I'm, I'm being so un, I'm being so selfless mm -hmm. to be helping all these other people and meanwhile what you're truly doing is getting drained yeah you're, yeah yeah you're, you're denying yourself mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and that's that's and not so, a good place to be and that's the place that's the where like when you were talking about this like we got to get out there and like people need to hear this like i'm like angry about this almost like you know and it's like um that's the way that we like raise this collective vibration is like we resource ourselves and then it's like hey like this is like really easy and joyful like do you want to come over here do you want to like come and play because it's fun over here and it yeah. like just becomes really inviting you know um to be able to be like actually it's like we can do this fun thing right like we don't have to do all this <laughs> listen you have a great i love your approach selena because again it it, it i think it's more or less the same common issue that's that we're all kind of stuck with and it yeah. takes a world full of people like you that can kind of get in there and decipher how to how to guide us to fix ourselves yeah, kind of yeah. right but you have a unique approach i see a lot of people they 
completely different way. Some people use, you know, sexual healing, sensual mm -hmm. healing this way because it really good. Yes, it, it's all it all has a place. Now I can mm -hmm. interview as many people that do this type of work, right? And every time I do, I get a little closer to. I'm st still nowhere near where I need to be, <laughs> but, yeah, but yeah. I'm not nearly as far away as I once was. I think that's the best way to put it. But a, a couple of Saturdays ago, when uh, the election results actually came out, mm -hmm. I like I made basically a policy that no, no politics on social media. But I broke all policy, man. I was just out there going, you know what? Yes, Biden, hashtag mm -hmm. fuck Trump. And I started raising some, some cane. Yeah. And a couple of people got into it and I engaged. And I shouldn't have done it. I know I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. Then somebody else, I shouldn't even be saying this too much, but I'm just going to be honest. I'll be a little vague. Somebody said something got into it with me and I, and I took it over the line. I took it over the line. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I got a little personal. And this yeah. is somebody who who has been, you know, I, I do these fundraisers for this little girl for this project I'm doing, and he's been, like, so generous, this guy. I can't even, I can't even, you know, and he just brought it to my attention, you know, who I was talking to, and I was just like, oh, man. I mean, you talk about sobering? Yeah. I mean, I yeah. felt like that little kid getting sent to the corner with the dunce hat. Like, I just felt like a worm, man. I can't tell you, man, like a worm. Mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and i said to myself boom i took down the whole post you yeah know? yeah i left the yeah. other eight posts up though i have to say but i, I took <laughs> that one down and um and i said i got i gotta i gotta reach out to him tomorrow man i i just yeah. i have to make this right i can't this is not cool what i did i couldn't even wait it turned out i couldn't even wait i had to reach out that night and, yeah. I, and i just you know apologized and it was from my heart because i really this guy had earned my a better level of he, he earned my respect already you know what i mean i just got so caught up that i just was disregarding you know it's yeah. a story of my life you talk about a pattern that's the that's the pattern no matter how hard i work i will screw it up there will be you know and i will do it and i will it will already be screwed up yeah by the time yeah. i realized i just screwed it up i mean this has been a, a, everywhere uh, from yeah. getting thrown off every one of them teams till mm -hmm. so i'll go back as far as fifth grade till Saturday night, two Saturdays ago. I mean, it's the yeah. same, rearing its ugly head again. So that's why yeah. this conversation is so vital to me. But yeah. I, all I could do is I could say to him, you know what? You earned more of me yeah. than I was out of line. I was wrong and I'm sorry. And I'm not trying to do this because, you know, to keep a, a, a donation thing going, you know? I mean, it's not, it's, and I have to be clear, like for me, I need to be yeah. clear on that, right? That's not what yeah. I'm doing. That's not my motive. You already were so good. Yeah. That I got no business coming back at you like that. Because we disagree on something, but I got personal and I was wrong. And I just, I had to do that. And you know what? He was an honorable person, man. He just said, hey, I get it, man. You know, wow. and he, he, he did, we, you know, we're good after that. What and a beautiful, felt, beautiful lesson. Wow. Yeah, but I'm 60, man. It's just like, when is this shit going to stop? Well, okay. Like, that's so, what I'm left with. So, you yeah. know what I mean? That's why I would talk to you. And I don't mean to take a session from you here and, like, you know. <laughs> no, no, but, no, no, but you know, you, I noticed that pattern like, there. Yeah. Well, I, I think, first of all, like, like, just take a pause to, like, acknowledge, like, wow. How <laughs> you far have you, how, how far have you come? Like, would you have been able to do this 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago? Would you be able to even see, like, hey, I, I kind of, I kind of fucked up here. Like, you know, and would you have even been able to see that? And would have you been able to go and say, hey, I'm so sorry and being able to do it from the heart and have this like connection and really be able to connect with somebody who like maybe ideologically you saw yourself as so far different from like, like just take a minute to like acknowledge like the progress and the growth. Yeah. I, that's one way of looking at it. That's not the way I was looking at it. Mm. But that, yeah, I mean, I guess, and that's what I need to do, like, look we, at it like that, too. But yeah. sometimes I feel like I'm just copping out and just saying, you know what, dude? You know, you got, listen, as you're saying that, I'm thinking, well, you know what? What did I feel like when I was a little kid and I really did something stupid and my parents would make me apologize? And yeah. I would, yeah. I would, you know, not want to do it, but yeah. I would do it and I would feel a little bit better. And like, yeah, yeah, I didn't mean that. And we're yeah. friends again. And, and at some point yeah. you can laugh about it or something later on yeah. in life, right? This is different, and man. And it came from the heart. It came because you wanted to do it, not because you were forced to do it, it sounds like. That's what I'm hearing. But, I, well, because of this little girl, though. You know, that's why yeah. I'm just like, I, I can't, I can't yeah. let my bullshit interfere and with this girl that needs help. Right? I can't be like, 
lashing out at people at that time and money to, to help this girl. And I'm yeah. going to like lash out. I mean, that's just like so. I got thrown yeah. out of rehabs and stuff like that. When I really did the most work I ever did for anything in my life for losing yeah. my cool in a split second. Amazing. Yeah. And, so and, and had to walk that walk of shame. Like, I can't believe I did this again. I did this again. I'm wrong, 100%. And that's the thing. So I can admit I'm wrong, but there's no really honor in that. Because that, that's yeah. always been the case. The no, honor guess, is in I... seeing it and maybe not doing it again for another, you know, f forever. <laughs> well, so what happens is that life presents us with opportunities and circumstances to see all of the places uh, in which we're not free, in which we have some sort of limiting pattern this, so this little girl gave you the opportunity yeah. to see that i can apologize from a place of love and heart and now i can do that and now you're going to be able to reinforce that act over and over now because you've now done it so she from the love that you had for her from the love that she provides with you you are then you were able to learn this beautiful lesson of I can apologize without being forced. I can apologize from the heart. I can apologize because I want to. And you learned that, and so that's true. That I that you're a hundred percent on on the ball with. Yeah. You know, but so can yeah. we just like acknowledge and celebrate first of all that you learned that beautiful lesson, and that now you can do this, and you can actually reinforce this, and do it with much more ease as you go forward. Can we just like take a moment for that? Yes. Can I get that's an awesome. amen? Yeah, <laughs> like a hallelujah, like. Oh. Like, no, but you know what like, it was? What I, you know what the on that, you know, like, honestly, it's... we get in these self-defeating patterns where it's like we're we've made so much progress and we're always just like looking forward to the future of like, no, I need to do more. I need to do more. And it's and it's holding this balance between like, yeah, there's room for improvement and there's things that I can work on. And I also am perfect and safe and loved just as I am right now. I am OK. There's nothing wrong with me and being able to at the same time hold and I could do things better. Like I can get it better. It's okay. You know, you know where and I it, think it, it comes to that balance again. Yeah. You know where I think it went wrong with me? Because in New York, you buy everything like bootleg, like, you know, swag, right? You yeah. Can get yeah, it, you know, yeah. Right. So you remember that book? I'm okay. You're okay. No, I don't know this book. You remember? Tell me about well, there was like this. It was one of the first self-help books back in the day. Okay. You know, okay. I bought I, the one I bought was uh, I'm okay. It's you. <laughs> so maybe the like message I got was wrong. I'm just saying, stuff. you know. Yeah. Oh my god, that's so funny. That's hilarious. But you know, you realize yeah. that the picture's bigger than me and my feeling in that moment. You know, it's just not yeah. that. There's a bigger yeah. picture, man, and, and thank God for that. And you know what's amazing? It's funny as you say that because I'm putting together this little uh, trailer for this thing I'm doing, and the, how inspiring this little child is without knowing it. And he has like a really good example, like what you just said. Mm. She has no idea this even happened. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And yet yeah. there's an impact. So when people talk about, what is that, um, mm -hmm. quantum physics, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. like that energy that's just, you know, sailing. And, you know, it's just yep. like, I, when we, like now what you're saying to me, can you just own that? I'm just like, no, <laughs> still resisting a little bit, but the, the, I can't deny something like that. Like, that's profound. Yeah. Yeah. It's huge. And that's it's real. Huge. And that's also then where that energetic shift starts to come in as well. And so when I'm working with people, like it is working on this quantum level where we are actually making shifts, where we are changing neurological pathways. And we are also like, there's an energetic shift that takes place in the body as well, where we can release these emotions and they don't have to continue to perpetuate for being stuckness. Um, and so it, it invites in this new possibility of a way to live your life in a different way. It happens through your life and we can just do it so much quicker. So yeah. just like this experience yeah. that you had, like yeah. where it's like, okay, oh my gosh, I learned this lesson. And you've gotten to this level of self-awareness where you're like, oh my God, I've learned this beautiful, incredible lesson from this. And it's like, you can now, you have now what becomes available to you. Like I always love to think about it. Like what is available to you now? What is available yeah. to you now is like, oh my gosh, I can apologize to someone from the heart without feeling like I have to, but doing it because I want to. Like that is huge. And then that also even, you can, you can turn that back on yourself of like, I could even do that to myself. Like what if you could now invite in more forgiveness in for yourself as well? Because you can then apologize to yourself because you now know what it feels like to give this forgiveness with love because you were able to do it 
And now you could probably, I, I, would, I would venture to say that you're probably even going to be able to give a deeper level of forgiveness to yourself with love because you know what it feels like. And so that's what I teach people in these, um, in, the, in these times that we work together is we actually bring in their ability to be able to feel things and see things and all of this possibility of things were, that were just not available to them previously. And all of a sudden it's just like the whole world shifts. And, and then it's what, you know, kind of the, the outcome of it is like, okay, so, you know, I doubled my revenue in two months, you know? And so that's like the human thing that pulls them in, but yeah. really the work that's happening underneath it is like, oh, now I can trust myself and I can trust my employees. And so I can let things go. I don't have to be in this burned out state where I'm always checking in on them and I can actually trust them to do the work that they're supposed to do. And then it frees up all of my time for creativity. And nope, now I just brought in like five new leads and I have so much more income, you know? This, yeah. You, you know, this is the that, first interview I've ever done where now I, I have to pay you for a session, you know, for my interview. <laughs> I mean, this, this really exemplifies your magnificence. This was an organic mm -hmm. moment. I'm just telling you something that, that just went down. And you turned yeah. it around. You allowed me to see it completely differently than I'm looking at it. Thank you. Right? I appreciate the acknowledgement. Thank you for it's, letting me. It, for it just that. happened. I mean, there's something profound about that. So, I mean, that's that's the gift that you have and what you do. And when we really get into it, you can shift so much. Like, I mean, just decades and decades within such a short period of time. Um, and so, yeah, it's just like this is the power of being able to, like, we live in our conscious mind pretty much most of the time. Um, and so really understanding and being able to see and go in and going to this place of just understanding what are these patterns that are running under and having an awareness and a reverence for, for being able to work with both. The motive was not to go where we went, right? No, 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 no. That, yeah. But if I'm not having this conversation with you, I don't get that experience. If I'm not yeah. like, in other words, my father used to have this expression, you know, if, if, if you want to sit in the right pew, first you have to get to the church. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm. So, in other words, mm -hmm. I got to come to where the the answer is. Like, I yep. have to be have because to, I'm here be with you. From within you to be able to realize, like, I actually, I, I I could use some help. Like, and it doesn't right. even need to be in the heaviness of like I need some help. And actually, most of the people that I'm working with now, um, they're these like really beautiful, self aware like entrepreneurs, and they actually regularly invest in their their personal development all the time because they understand the value of personal development and they understand how it literally has ripple effects throughout their entire lives. Like it improves their relationships, their sex life, their, their relationship with their parents, their partnerships, their social life, their business, like all of it has. Because you're getting to the when, core. When you're improved, when you're working on yourself. So these are the types of people that I regularly are working with because they understand the importance of, so it, 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 you don't want it to come from this place of, Oh, I'm so stuck that I have to invest in myself now to like dig myself yeah. out of this hole. But like, I want to keep getting better. Like, this is great. Like, life is awesome, and I want more of this. So let's do some more of this, you know? <laughs> yeah, and you know what? It's exhausting. The way yes. you're living your life, it's freaking exhausting. Mm -hmm. It's like you got, you know, mm -hmm. like holding a resentment, you know, is, is like how draining and exhausting it is. And yet, when you don't know anything else, you become immune to that exhaustion. And you have to, yes. you have to be, make yourself available to what yes. looks better. Like, I have to see what you're doing and say, yes. hey, can I, can I learn about what you're doing in order to say, wow, that, that, yeah, that makes yeah. sense. It's actually one of the things that I work with a lot with the, the people, the entrepreneurs that I work with is like um, these patterns of burnout, these cycles of burnout, which often are rooted in like just being able to love yourself, being able to value yourself, being able to trust yourself. Like there's a, a variety of for each person that's going to be slightly different. But like when you think about it, like when you get burned out, I mean, this is me even. I used to manage like large scale international development projects. I was, my portfolio was hundreds of millions of dollars. And I was like constantly feeling like I had to be on top of things all the time. And I was working across multiple time zones. I got so burned out and it took me a year and a half to get through, to get to like get myself back in a place where I was like, okay, I think I'm ready to start to pick up like working again. And so, like, just think about, like, all of the lost time. Was that, was that your revenue. trauma? Was that your, oh, like, was that, like, that was, I know. Oh, that was, that, that was, a, that was a result of, that was a result of a lot of earlier stuff. That was just. I, I, I think I hear, a, I, I think I, I hear a part two coming. 
Yeah. <laughs> I used to seek I used to seek validation through um, my work efforts. That was how I sought validation and love for myself. That's how I validated myself. But did you work yourself and, into complete exhaustion? Like you just like emotionally oh, and mentally yeah. just drained, right? Spent. Oh yeah, yeah. And I would just I was working like ten, twelve hours a day and but that was like how I got validation was like, you know, everybody would um when there was a difficult thing, they'd be like, Oh, hey, give it to Selena. She can handle it. You know, like, and that gave me some sort of sense of validation. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and, and in that environment, rightfully so in that environment, I mean, right. Yeah. You're the, mm -hmm. you're the go-to person. You're the dependable one yep. that can, can do the impossible. Right. And that was my thing. My thing was dependable. And so it was like, you know, and I had to start being able to put myself first and realize that I can still be dependable and also take care of myself. But if you just think about that timeline of burnout, like all of that lost income at the le the revenue level that I was working at before, right? Like for a year and a half, oh my God! If you can just take you know, you know, a few thousand dollars investment, even like a you know, a ten or fifteen thousand dollar investment to save you like two years worth of burnout, like I mean, it's easy. Like the math is just easy. Like you don't even have to. Yeah. You know? for you. How does that make you feel? When somebody's stuck and they can't get out of their own way, all of a sudden there's that breakthrough and you're there for that. It's so fulfilling. Like that, to me, my like priority right now is making sure that my clients are fully supported, that they, that they get the, the transformation that they're looking for. Right. And, um, and it's, and it's incredible because I actually had to work through programs myself. I had money beliefs about like work has to be hard. I had beliefs <laughs> about, I had beliefs, oh yeah, and I had like old ancestral patterns because so like I was saying from, you know, my family from Connecticut, um, a couple generations back, they were farmers. Like they were like farmers who had scarcity with those like new crops. Right. And I had, like hands old aren't patterns. dirty and you're not sweating, yeah. that's not work. Exactly. And so I only understood work to be something that like you had to be exhausted at the end of the day. And it was like this old farmer mentality, honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I had, I, I found all sorts, you can't even imagine all the things that I found in myself. I had to break down patterns of like work can be enjoyable, that you can make money and have fun at the same time that you can, like these things are actually possible. Like you can, you can make um, work and provide benefit to people. I had all sorts of programs about I have to save the world and I have to do everything, like all sorts of things that I was able to clear out and then get to this place where like you can actually enjoy and, and bring in and have a enjoyable life. And that is actually possible for everyone. Ultimately, do you think you found your purpose doing this work that you're doing right now? Mm, that's a really good question. I think that we have, um, there is a, there's even, I found that people have patterns, and myself included. I, I think mine wasn't so strong. I think I had brought it down, broke it down from some of the other work before I came to this, but that like there's one purpose and there's the one thing that you do and you can only do this. But life is just like the, the yeah. purpose of life is to live. What's right? going to be revealed so to next? Have, yeah, it's to have all of these experiences. And so am I very fulfilled and happy right now in exactly what I'm doing? Absolutely. 100%. Is this what I'm going to be doing for the rest of my life? Maybe. Maybe not. Okay, but God okay forbid your life ended tomorrow. Would mm -hmm. this, uh, this being your legacy, would this be? I would be happy with this as my legacy. Yeah, yeah. so that, that, say, that says it all right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would be I would be very happy with and actually I've I kind of felt that the whole time of my whole life. I would actually even when I was in the really, really hard work, I knew I used to manage international development projects. So it was international aid and and, um, and I felt like the work that I was doing was always purposeful yeah. and important. So um, fighting a good fight. Yeah. So, yeah, I, 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 I've always felt I've always I, I've never had a strong fear of death because I've always felt that everything that I'm doing um is I, I'm, I'm I'm doing the things that I want to do and I'm doing the things that make me happy and also now even more so make the people around me happy where in the past that wasn't as much of the case because of that shutting down and being closed and all of that kind of thing now I'm in a more like communal and openness and bringing inviting people in so it's just it's like every day is just getting better and I'm happy where I am and like I have I have big goals also. Don't you be thinking I'm not that, I'm not so big. I'm so big. <laughs> I, I, I can't believe how great this was. This mm. was a, such a treat. You're amazing. Oh, man. You. I, I, I adore you for, for the work you do, for who you are, and for we've, what we've had to go through to get this thing together. Yeah. <laughs>
but, it was perfect. It, is all, it all devolved the way they were supposed it, it, to be. And, and I know it always does, and that's why I was so glad that we, we, we did this right now. Yeah. When something's good, I know it's good. Like, I could, you know, I just know. Yeah. This was yeah. brilliant, man, you, you, because of you. Because you you just do your thing. And you as well. And you as well, also. So let, Go ahead, flattery will get you just about everywhere here. Yes, yes. <laughs> but, like, but truly, like, you take those moments to acknowledge, like, your part in this as well. Like, how much you have transformed has enabled you to be in the place where you can facilitate this type of conversation because you've been through the gamut you've been through all of these things that has provided you the ability to ask the right questions to to relate to openly relate to be open with me in a way that can pull these things out of me that i also feel comfortable to be able to share as well and i'm not in a place of defense or having to prove myself that it's just flowing easily and so it is a true two true two way like like co-creation, you know? It's a very nice thing to say. I'm honored that you would say something like that. But I just think in my case that it, it kind of makes all the nonsense and all the insanity and the mayhem and whatever words you want to throw to that, those 30 years or whatever it is, right? Um, worthwhile. Like, you know, yeah. like it not just, you know, in vain. Like it just, yeah. you know, because you can take that and you can say, you know what? I got no right to be judgmental towards nobody, really. Mm -hmm. Although I catch myself in all day, every day. I, at least I yeah. can pull myself back. But let me just ask you this final question. And then hopefully mm -hmm. we might get you back uh, at some time for a, a part two of the real story. <laughs> the untold story of Selena Smith. The behind the scenes. <laughs> <laughs> the making of the, Are the you great ready Selena. For the behind the scenes aspect? <laughs> Do you think that in order for you to be complete in whatever mm. endeavor you were going to make yours in life, it had to mm. be like a complete soul journey? Mm. Like what you're on now, it's a soul journey, is it not? So I have um, a difficulty answering that question because we're all on a soul journey. Everyone is. Everything that we're doing in every moment of every time of every day, all the time, whoever we are, every single person, that is their soul journey. Okay, so let, let's let's let me rephrase that then. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, see, that's where the limitations don't pay off. Because <laughs> <laughs> it was your soul journey that got you to the place of where you are. Yeah, that but was it wasn't your, okay. So to, yeah. okay, so a conscious soul journey, like where you're, you're saying what I meant by that. I should say. <laughs> let me just say. Okay. As far yeah, as yeah. that, you're saying that your soul needs to be nurtured along with what you're doing and what you're giving that you need to just there's some feeling that you have to have that's born in some spiritual place that has to be part of what you do like it, it's it's a, it's a conscious decision you're making that this is going to be part of clearly mm -hmm. who you are mm -hmm. and, and your yeah. path is that yeah for me this kind of higher spirituality pieces um uh, what happens for me is that we it's coming back to this remembering, to this awareness, right? So we are still, you're, you are still your soul. Your soul is still you. Your soul is still on this journey the entire time. You are learning the things that you, you wanted to learn. You're learning the things that, you know, even just like we were talking about with how you just learned this beautiful lesson and gift about uh, forgiveness and um, apologizing. Like these are all just part of our soul journey. These are things that we're just like, yeah. learning along the way. And um, for the higher spirituality, the more that we come into our own awareness of our true essence, the easier the path becomes because there's almost this like backbone of support of knowing that like everything's going to be okay all the time. And so therefore you can step into, okay, what do I choose to do? Like no matter what it is that I choose, I can never go wrong because I'm fully supported and loved all the time and I've gotten through everything to get to this point. And so the more that you can pull off these, I mean, these, you know, old karmic patterns, um, the more that you can come into this awareness of your true essence of your magnificence of realizing like you are like a freaking miracle that you exist. Every single one of us. Like you're made of like, I think three trillion cells is your body and every single one of those cells has like six feet of DNA in it. 
And if you take that six feet of DNA in each one of the cells in your body and you wrap it around the world, it goes around, I think, like 20 million times. I might have those numbers, not 100%, but I'm pretty sure it's about 20 million times. That is just the essence of you. And all of that DNA is just forming like these pieces. Like you are a freaking miracle. And the more that we can be in awareness and remembrance of that in every single day of our lives, it's like, okay, I don't have to be living in this fear or this scarcity or this lack or this inadequacy in any sort of way. I can step out of that, step out of these like human instinctual um, limitations that truly they're just there to try to keep you alive, to like not get eaten by the saber toothed tiger, but don't have to project those on all of the situations of everything that's going on in my life. Because we are so lucky to be born in this day, in this modern day and age where not everybody on this planet for sure, but a great majority of us on this planet, we have our basic needs met. So we actually don't have to be like grounded in those um, fear instincts and can actually be in this more realm of possibility because we're going to have food. You're going to have shelter. So let's go and work into more of the creativity and the positivity and the self-realization and the love. Are you kind of saying that you're just a result of your continual evolvement? Yeah. And that's not to say that I don't like, I mean, I fall into this. I fall into those patterns too. Like I fall into that. I fall into this. Like I get scared. I, you know, I I will project old patterns still on, on people externally from me. I mean, um, I was uh, recently, it was having even where uh, an old pattern of something that existed with my mom of like feeling like she was coming into my space. I was projecting it on my landlord. Like, I mean, I still do it, right? Like, this stuff still, it still happens. And I'm like, why am I so angry at him? And I'm like, oh, that's you, Selena. So, like, you know, these things, they just come up to teach us. And it's just more and more awareness so that you can be more in the place of, like, the ease and the comfort. But it doesn't mean that if you're not in the place of ease and comfort, 100% of the time you're failing somehow, right? It, it, it does come a lot more easy now. But, I mean, I've been on this journey for a while trying yeah. to understand myself, trying to come overcome disease, trying to overcome trauma, all sorts of things. Um, similarly to you, you know? And so um, I think that's really commendable for all of us and everyone who is, is on this path. I think, and I think all of us are on this <clears throat> path. Every single one of us, we, just, we, want to, we want to be a better person. We want to enjoy a more enjoyable life. We want to have the things that make us happy. And like, that's beautiful and acceptable. And there, should, there, there doesn't need to be any guilt or shame or downplaying around that beauty of this is that when you said before you're a miracle we're a miracle i do this thing where i'm telling my story and looking at a bunch of guys all the time i've been doing this for years and years <clears throat> say so you gotta understand that you're a miracle man that, that's a word we yeah. throw around but you're really a fucking miracle like you're not supposed yes. to be here man and i and yes. i can so easily give that to somebody but i need you to point that out to me it's, yeah. it's like, it's so bizarre. Like, it's like, we could do all the, whatever, the talking and helping we want, but if we don't get out talking to and out helping from, it, it kind of leaves it yeah. eventually a little out of balance. Well, and it just comes <coughs> all the way back. You're just, you just beautifully brought it back to kind of that theme that's been the underline throughout this entire conversation is that, that importance of the communication as yeah, well. It's, like, it's, we just, we bring each other back, you know? Like, when we get a little bit off, like, we can bring each other back, you know? And it's, and it's beautiful. It's a, it, I mean, that's the kind of some of the essence of um, even Tantra is really it's this weaving. It's this weaving together of the energies where we in, um, uh, in communication with each other, in a, you know, an energetic exchange with other, in like this type of, that's how we, we learn more about ourselves. It, it allows us to arise more higher and higher levels of consciousness. How is this not more popular? In Western culture. I mean, Taj is the most beautiful thing ever put on this planet. Yeah. yeah. Right? And, and, it, and, and, then, and then we, in our human mind, like, our, we, like, take it and just pull, like, this tiny piece of it. But it's actually so much more big and beautiful. And, but yet and we've done the same thing to yoga. We've done the same thing to everything. We just, we westernize it. And that's our own fault. But, yeah. yes, it's a beautiful thing. With Selena, I... I I can't thank you enough. You are just the creme de la creme of what I do here. Like you just, you just brought so much to the table here. And as much as you brought, it's the way you bring it. No, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. I just want to say thank you. And uh, let's 
uh, agree to at some point we'll do this again. And so, yeah. you know, all right. So I'm open if anybody that's watched us here and would say, you know what? I want to work yep. with her. I, I need to contact yep. her. How do they find you? How do they contact yeah. you? Absolutely. So um, my uh, website, uh, you can find me on my website, which is um, subconscious reset, subconscious reset dot co, not dot com, but dot co. And um, and then you can find me on my social media handles as well. Um, I love to connect and talk with people on social media. Like if you, um, you know, found me on this conversation, just go ahead and you can just send me a DM and say, like, I heard you talking on this conversation um, with Scott and I really loved it or just whatever resonated with you. Um, and so my Instagram is Selena Selinda, which actually is a, a name that a Peruvian shaman gave to me. He kept calling me <laughs> Selinda because in, um, in Spanish, Selinda is like to be beautiful, right? So S-E-L-I-N-A, S-E-L-I-N-D-A is All my right. Instagram handle, right. Instagram handle. And, um, and then the same on Facebook as well. So you can find me, my name is Selena Smith, but you can, it's Facebook slash Selena Selinda. Beautiful. Well, listen, thank you so much for your time and for your insight. It's the, you're the best. You are thank the best. Thank you. I really, really appreciate it. You, you as well. Right back at you. So I really appreciated it. And um, Thank you, my yeah, friend. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. <laughs> listen, the pleasure is mine. You made it an opportunity. I mean, this is the opportunities for anybody that's going to observe this. Keep yeah. fighting that good fight and doing your good work. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Selena.